why don't we start with introductions. Um, I'm Eric, and some folks have seen me on the forums. Um, my um, username is EAX, so do a lot of weird stuff on that forum, talk a lot about um, sex. I know some guys are on there. Um, but I also like to talk a lot about, um, just uh, I love trading cards, I like um, fighting games, RPGs, so um, part of that passion is to be able to go to other places and have those kind of gaming experiences. So, um, I think some of you guys coming to this workshop is really about how do I go to different parts of the world and experience having the same gamer experiences that we all get to do here locally. And I think one of the examples of a gamer vacation is really here. So how many folks are actually not from the Bay Area? Who travel? Wow. So you guys, you guys already have uh, some of those skills already. And uh, while there is a um, kind of slides to this presentation, it actually is all available online. So I don't want folks to focus on remembering or memorizing anything I'm saying. If you want to uh, see this online, it's, um, it's gvacation.tumblr.com. You can just uh, bookmark that right now. Um, anything that you can't remember, refer to the website um, so that you can really hear each other and your um, own tips, okay? So uh, in addition to the folks who are visiting, how, how many folks, this is your first type of convention? Okay, that's not bad, that's not bad, okay, that's good. Um, and how, but how many folks have gone abroad to go to a convention? So Canada folks, of course, no, um, all right, so, some folks here. Um, so, but how many folks have actually gone abroad, just in general? So, folks, you can see around. We have a pretty good group here. There are some folks who have never gone outside of the country. Um, so, I assume that means you're from the United States. <laughs> okay. So, um, but part of the experience of being a part of um, the gay community and being part of um, the world is being able to see each other in every kind of environment and setting. So. That's kind of our goal. Our goal today is learn how to get to places, uh, what to do when we get there, and uh, you know what um, what are some of the do's and don'ts. I think that that's the practical side that folks are looking for here, right? So, um, and how many folks here actually have been to Asia? Oh, that's pretty good. I'm really impressed. Um, so, um, so we kind of outline kind of what we're here to do, right? So. What, what are gaming vacations? Um, where do you want to go? And uh, what do we want to do when we get there? Um, because this room sucks and we don't have Wi-Fi. Um, so, do you need Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi. Um, it's okay. So I just want to point out my little dorky picture of one of the things I do like is Yu-Gi-Oh! And Woo! one of the cool things about Yu-Gi-Oh! is that it's a worldwide thing. Um, is it magic? Mag is magic a worldwide thing? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but uh, in general, you can you can really a lot of the games that you play, uh, a lot of the activities that you like are shared by many other people around the world, and I think that's the kind of bond that we are looking for when we're going um, traveling and gaming is that we can meet people who share our interests. And of course, one of our similar interests is maybe that we like a guy, not a girl, or we like a girl, not a guy. Whichever way is, I think we want to have those shared experiences, not to feel like we're alone. And I think that's really one of the hardest parts of traveling is when you're alone, you feel like you're alone, and suddenly it feels like it's worse than being at home. Um, so how do we kind of um, work around some of those kind of feelings of anxiety, of being overwhelmed when you're traveling? Um, so, so part of it is, it is kind of both a journey and a destination. I think the adage, oh, it's not about the destination, but the journey. It's both. That how we get there, how we all share this experience, planning things out, making sure that we're able to, you know, have a good time, and then make sure that the things kind of go through. We also want to talk about what we want out of that trip. And you know, I just want to see if anybody can just shout out, what do you guys want to do or get out of a vacation? Anybody? Relaxation. Relaxation. Experiences. Experiences. Uh, seeing the culture firsthand. Good culture. Anything else? New social what is it? New, so new social opportunities. New social opportunities. Does anybody want to do a body one? Anything? People? No one's looking for sex while they're on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There's that too. So, um, so I think kind of you have a good idea of why you're going on vacation because sometimes I think when we think about vacation, it's just about leaving home. Uh, but sometimes it's also about what do I want to do? What do I want to get out of it? And, and I think for us gamers, what we really want is to have do the hobbies that we like to do at home, but with new people or new settings, right? Does that kind of make sense? Um, so, 
Um, part of the experience is being able to meet people. Uh, cute guys, of course, but um, as you guys saw at the masquerade this morning, cosplay is definitely a universal thing. We get to meet people. And one of the cool things about cosplay is that you can actually talk to people you don't know, and they're open to that. And that's one of those experiences that we all crave, that we're not nervous or that we, oh my god, we can't talk to people we don't know, and that I think this is a good example of those things that those shared experiences that we can have when we're traveling, even if we don't speak the same thing, that guy did not speak any English. So um, that we can still <laughs> enjoy each other's company. Uh, and that actually was for, at the Tokyo Game Show last year. Um, and it actually is coming out very soon. Um, but again, these are kind of examples. Now, as you guys are seeing, kind of like being able to go to those cons that you want to go to, and there are a lot. Um, and I'm not just saying in Asia, there are plenty in the, in the UK and in Europe that are cropping up now where their anime conventions are big and getting bigger and huge. There's an opportunity for us to really explore the world and meet people that we otherwise would not be able to meet kind of in our own backyards. Um, and I think there are some more basic things that are fun that when we're here but have a really big experience kind of, it's much more uh, visceral when we're there. Like, for example, going to an arcade. How many folks actually have local arcades in your community? Not that many, right? So to, to go to go to Tokyo and see 17 different arcades on one street and be able to go, go in them and enjoy them, I think that, that kind of really kind of reinforces kind of our passions as gamers. Being able to just enjoy it for what it is, but also say, wow, this is something that we don't get to do when we're back home. Um, and then also, I think one of the, my personal passions is being able to see the culture, right? I think somebody said culture before. But part of the, it's, there's the historic culture aspect of it. And for example, in San Francisco, there's a huge kind of historical aspect to the city, right? A long history of um, the development of the community here, all the different neighborhoods. But it, just as much in other countries, there's a contemporary culture. And gay culture is one of those um, contemporary cultures where we get to know what is the local gay community doing, the bars and clubs, the different activities. Um, I think my personal thing is being able to go to see independent artists in local, small local art galleries. Uh, and definitely in Asia, that's the big thing. Being able to go see those independent artists, go to parties, shindigs, and being able to meet those artists, that's one of those valuable experiences that can kind of really benefit from being able to go abroad and share those experiences with other people. Um, and then, you know, as I said before, some people might be looking for some sex, here's some action. <laughs> um, and as you guys know, in this hotel, there is actually an onsen here. So for folks who've ever been to an onsen, is anybody here? Going to admit to it or a um, bathhouse to some of the other guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, so, so, I mean, but the experience of going to an onsen in Tokyo, for example, or actually in Japan, not in Tokyo, but in, in Japan, it's a totally different experience where you might be seeing, like, an 80 year old man over there naked. You can see, like, a family, a dad and a child there. But it's not the same context as what we're used to, say, a bathhouse where, like, oh, you dropped the soap. So, so I think there's that cultural aspect that we're also trying to learn. And of course, as you guys know, being in an onsen, there are a lot of rules, and you know, don't don't look at somebody's junk for five, over five seconds, you know, um, or put on your modesty towel. So, um, so that that learning experience and being able to experience the different things that you may not be able to experience in your own communities. Again, that's what we're looking for. And as I said at the last bullet, it's also about cruising hot guys. You know, that's that's what we all want, right? Um, so, so part of it is how do we get there? Um, and I think what I want to know from you guys as the folks who have traveled here for GamerX, what are some of the common problems that you guys encounter? Uh, I listed a couple of them. Um, getting, finding money. Who has, who has unlimited money? Anybody? Oh god, you guys are all bad dating material. <laughs> no one's going to admit they have a big fat wallet. Um, but but um, I know another concern for folks is just getting time off. How many folks, how many, uh, how many weeks of vacation do you guys usually get? Any, anybody? Three weeks. Three? That's not bad. Some of you know no vacation? Maybe? Who, who, who is on permanent vacation, aka unemployed? Oh, okay. See, these people are kind of smart. They don't want to ID themselves. Um, but, <laughs> but I think they, one of the other concerns is resources. Get, having resources, knowing, um, knowing who to talk to when you get to the country, um, how to get around, how to get the information that you need. And that's also some, some, one of the concerns that folks have is language uh, barriers, right? Are there any other type of um, kind of barriers or concerns that folks have about traveling abroad? 
Anybody? Sure. Yeah, so like a tourist trap. I and mean, that's, a, that's a real concern that folks have. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that, actually. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so, so I think the one big thing that folks are concerned about, though, is safety, right? Um, let's, let's be real. Um, discrimination still happens, and homophobia, racism, xenophobia is still alive and well. Um, we know that as people in the United States, that's alive and well. Going abroad, I know there are a lot of concerns from folks about traveling abroad where, um, you know, is it okay if I'm out or, you know, if I'm holding my boyfriend's hand? Um, and I think one of the things I genuinely want to tell people is, you know, everywhere else in the world, they are like us. We're all humans. And I think folks who are in the, what's it, the EA panel, we're all humans. And we all kind of, you know, uh, some folks may not understand or comprehend kind of, you know, each of our own experiences, but we all have these general shared human experiences. So when we understand the, the issue of safety, safety is about um, knowing when uh, to do something, when not to do something, right? So yes, is it absolutely, you, you know, you can absolutely go out and uh, dance around naked and yelling, uh, I'm queer, I'm here, uh, get used to it. Um, in front of the Westboro Baptist Church. Can you do that? Absolutely you can. If that person has a gun on them, is that a safe thing to do? No, right? So it's about picking your battles, gauging the situation when something is safe to do. So when you're traveling abroad, I think it's also knowing kind of what the situation is. So for folks who know, for example, going to Singapore. In Singapore, it is still on the books that being gay is a crime. So. Um, what do you do? So you know when, when it's appropriate to do something, when not it's appropriate to do something. It's not to say that being gay is shameful or bad, but it's knowing the situation. Similarly, around safety is, and knowing when not to be kind of a, a mark for something is to gauge your surroundings. Um, just as much as if you're going to a really crowded place, not to put your wallet in your back pocket or you know, making sure you don't carry a lot of money, those are kind of that sense of awareness that you want to have when we're traveling. And I think it's really important that we understand that as gamers, that we're both, we will want to enjoy the experience, but not, also not obsess about those negative aspects. Because I know that that's a really big stressor is we always focus on, oh my God, am I going to get robbed? Or am I going to get, um, you know, um, am I going to get an STD? You know, all those, all those concerns. So, um, but I definitely want to have folks understand that when, when you are, are a victim of discrimination, to understand that as long as you are the one who is, uh, polite and beyond reproach, that's how I like to describe it as, they're the one who is always wrong. So if you understand the cultural norms and you understand the, how to do something politely and you ask for things politely, they're the one in the wrong if they're discriminating against you or doing something that's unfair to you. So, and use that. And if, if you are confronted, say, by a policeman, you can explain the situation, they're the one who did this, I, I did everything according to the rules. And, and that's the kind of golden rule of traveling, is to always make sure that you're following the rules but also kind of call upon other people if they are breaking the rules, okay? So, so part of it, it's a battle. Everything in life is a battle. Um, and I think the biggest battle that we all have, technically, is with our wallets. <laughs> so I, I kind of came up with a really sample budget, and I think actually this might be close to this budget for folks. So I don't know how much folks actually spend, particularly the folks who travel really far out, but in general what we're looking at is when you're coming up with a budget of how much you're going to spend on a trip, like GameWorks, for example. Um, there's things like airfare, for example, that you have to think about. Um, so if we're going from, say, for example, where I'm from, Boston, all the way to Tokyo, it costs about $900 to $1,200. Now, maybe for the folks in the Bay Area, it actually would be cheaper. But for folks um, who are not close to you, for example, the price may be a little bit higher. Um, then other considerations you have to think about, of course, is hotel. Who's staying in the Kabuki tonight? Okay, these are the people you should hook up with tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, if you're staying in a hotel, you know, you got, you got all the, um, every single night that you're staying is a cost, okay? And in, in this situation, it can come up to about $1,000, almost as much as your plane tickets to stay in a hotel. Um, and then things like food, uh, who's been enjoying the, the, the malls, the two malls here? Yeah, good, good. What the hell are you guys, the rest of you eating? Probably <laughs> in the room or something? <laughs> well, they're the smart people, because they're saving money, right? So, um, and then things like transportation, going to see sightseeing, and I don't know if folks have ever taken the hop on, hop off bus here in San Francisco, or actually no, go take the trolley, that's a dumb thing. Do the trolley, that's much cheaper. But um, 
Uh, and then the, I think the biggest thing that most people obsess about is shopping. Especially if you're going abroad, you want to buy as much crap as possible to not make sure your, your luggage goes beyond 50 pounds, uh, but you want to get as much stuff as possible. So who is concerned that they're not going to make it through with 50 pounds? Wow, these are poor people here. Okay. Um, so, so, but in terms, if you add that all up, you're looking at about almost $3,000. And, and how many people are spending around that much for this trip? Oh, there you go. They, they have some money or, or credit card or cash. Okay, uh, but in general, that's really how much we're looking at if we're going on a trip. And that's a huge financial commitment for a lot of us. Um, and so I kind of want to give you guys an example of what, what is life about. Life is about money, but life is also about a paycheck, right? So when, when we have a paycheck, and I want to do a kind of more reasonable um, annual salary amount just because we, not all of us make a lot of money, and, and a lot of us are part-timers. Um, so, so just using kind of a sample amount, and 29,000 is actually the federal poverty level kind of amount, which is bad. That's not a lot of money, and definitely if you're living in San Francisco, you are, where are you living if, for 29,000 a year? <laughs> not even in San Francisco, right? Uh, <laughs> somewhere under the bridge, right? Um, but, but if you're making that much, it roughly translates about 2,400 a month um, in, in a monthly salary. And, and when you think about it, almost half of that immediately goes to rent, right? Or your car payment, or your insurance. Um, so, so half of your paycheck is already gone. Before you even get your paycheck, it's already gone. Um, and then if you really roughly think about it, it's about 25% is spent on discretionary spending. Um, maybe some more for others, uh, like people who went out last night. Um, so if you're spending with 25% of that um, on discretionary spending, like going out to clubs, having drinks, um, that, that's a big chunk of your paycheck already gone too. Hopefully the good people in this room, and hopefully there are some people who do more than this, but 25% of your paycheck each month should be spent on your savings, right? It could be saving for a new car, saving for college, saving for whatever it is that you want. Uh, but everybody should be putting away at least 25 bucks. 25,000, it's 25%. <laughs> so, it's a little bit of a verbal slip here. I'm trying to remember how much I actually have in savings. Um, but but our folks, does that seem reasonable to for folks that we use those numbers? About 25% of your paycheck is being saved? Holy crap, no? <laughs> I guess most of you are living paycheck to paycheck here. So. So I'll want to see your, your credit card bills next month, okay? So, um, but, but so if we look at that, one of the best ways to try and get money, because money doesn't go out of nowhere, you need to find money in order to come to Game Rex, right? Nobody got like a donation or their parents didn't necessarily pay for this, right? You had to find the money from somewhere. And, and part of what I like to kind of propose to you guys is if there was a way for us to kind of reduce our spending, for a short period of time, we can actually generate a lot of money to go away on vacation. So, so for example, with the 25% of discretionary spending, if we just reduce by 5%, 5% of your monthly um, of your monthly salary, you could get $120 each time, you know, each month to, to really be able to, to use for something else. So 120, you know, that's about like three club trips, right? No? Two? <laughs> One? <laughs> Holy crap. Do you have like three boyfriends that can also? You uh, <laughs> need to get like a sugar daddy for, for your income. Okay. Um, but, but then the other part is um, when you're saving, you know, folks are also saving for general things in life. Like you want a new car, you know, your car's kind of ratty. You want, you, want, you want a good car to impress that guy or girl. And um, so, but why don't we just kind of shift a little bit of those savings directly to a vacation fund. So we can also move about 15%, just for a short period of time, you know? So, so maybe it'll take a little bit longer before you get a new car, but you'll be closer to going away on vacation. So if you, if you shift those dollars, it's about $500 that you could potentially shift over. And that's a lot of money that you could be uh, putting away. And remember our, our amount before, it was about $3,000. So if you really can stick to this kind of, um, uh, strategy, you can really reach that that goal pretty soon. But maybe maybe 500 bucks is too much. How about let's do half of that? Half of 240 or 250 a month. Is that reasonable? How many folks think they can scrounge and save up maybe 250 dollars a month? Yeah, it's actually pretty reasonable. So so and so obviously if you do that 250, it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get to that goal, but you'll get to that goal. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 
So that's the savings part of it. So now let's just go over some of the more practical things about logistics, okay? So when we're talking about going away, um, so how, what were, so folks went, how many folks have actually been to Japan? Great, I'm really impressed, that's really awesome. Um, so, so as you guys know, you know, going away to a big city, there's a lot of, a lot of things that they consider. First off, transportation, there are so many transportation options, but it's still expensive. So just like the awful BART system, it costs, a lot of money to get somewhere, right? The further the distance, the more expensive it is. And, and so even though there is a lot of public transportation options, it's still, you still have to consider how, uh, how am I gonna budget for things like traveling, uh, tra local transportation. Um, so, but other things that you think about is um, if you're gonna stay in a hotel, if you're traveling by yourself, you're kind of screwed. You're gonna have to pay for that room yourself unless you turn it into a brothel and then you could, you know, hire some jobs, <laughs> make back that money somehow. But um, how many folks actually had came with a friend and is double, triple, or quadding? Or I heard there was six people in one room last night. That was, that, that's kind of awful, um, six people. Uh, probably two of them are sleeping on the balcony or something. Um, but but um, for, for if you are able to save money on that way, great. But you knowing for myself, I actually travel alone um, a lot. So basically, if you're by yourself, you really have to think about how much you can cut back or how much you can save on those hotels. A lot of times it means you have to stay further out, for example, from the city. Or you have to stay in a room that's the size of this stage. Um, and for most of us, we don't care because we don't actually stay in our room a lot, right? All we're doing is just, that's where you sleep. But that's not where you're, well, if you're hooking up with guys, it's kind of an issue. But, um, but just make it quick, okay? Um, but definitely, um, when looking for hotels, I think the, the most common question, I guess, um, folks have is like, which one to pick? And you know, I think most folks already know TripAdvisor. I really think TripAdvisor is one of the best sites that you can pick. Um, but definitely use their app. The app lets you to kind of um, see also in the same area and it's dynamic and it shows up everywhere, all the surrounding hotels. Um, and it's, I think you can really trust the, the, the feedback that some folks say, except for the ones that do one is that they didn't give me any free stuff, 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 or whatever. Um, there's no free anything when you go in a hotel. So, but in general, utilize, I think, TripAdvisor as, as one of the things, and any of the travel sites that you book from, they'll link to the travel, uh, TripAdvisor ratings anyways. Um, and then the other thing, I think there will be some folks in here who actually know about this. Who, who's actually been on couchsurfing.org? Couchsurfing.org. Wow, surprise. Oh, well, I guess because you guys are staying in a hotel, but um, Couchsurfing um, is actually a great site. It's, um, it is a community site similar to um, Gamer Connect. People who are up to traveling around the world, they basically put a profile up, some sexy pictures, not new, of sexy pictures up of yourself. Uh, you talk about your experience traveling around the world. Um, but how many folks actually let friends crash on their couch? Wow, good friends, that's good. Um, so that's a similar concept. So instead of a friend, you are letting an international traveler usually crash on your couch. Um, yes, there is that safety issue coming up again, but definitely we also want to just think about it as it's kind of opening your, your, your couch or your bed to also additional um, opportunities for people to meet um, you and you meet others. Uh, and for us in the United States, being able to travel to other countries and being able to surf on another person's couch, it means you're saving, um, if you guys remember, about $1,000 for a trip. Think about how much you can use that $1,000 on all the other crap that you're gonna buy, okay? Um, so I would definitely um, encourage folks to check out couchsurfing.org. If not, to you know potentially use it and travel. Um, at least you can meet local people in the, for example, the Bay Area, who are also couch surfers. Because those folks are going to be the ones who have traveled abroad and used couch surfing and know all the tips about how to save money. So it, it's a great community website for you to really understand um, how to do this on a budget. And then um, the more practical kind of stuff around um, just knowing how to get around and save money. So how many people know the scam of the unlimited passes here? And the unlimited passes are fine for if you want to, if you're here for a certain amount of time and you know you can take a lot of the train, but it's, say for example, you're paying, was it $28 for the Muni Unlimited, I think? If you're not gonna take the Muni that much, is it good for you to buy a limited pass? So probably not. So, so the goal when you're reading the fine print, especially for a lot of the Japanese, um, um, public transit is to read what happens when you're having to find something that is unlimited versus something that is um, by value, by fare. So um, I encourage folks to always re do that research before you go to the country because if you're trying to ask that while you're in the country, you're gonna be having about 20 other people behind you. Can you get the hell out of the way, please? 
Um, and we want to make sure that we're, we're not sweating, okay? Um, and then I also want to talk about, um, actually the Kabuki is a good example. The Kabuki actually offers a free shuttle to the airport, right? I think, I think. Folks, check on that if you're going to the airport today. Tell me if, you, if I'm wrong, okay? But in general, if there's a free shuttle to the airport, you definitely want to take, in, um, take that kind of um, perk uh, into account, especially because a lot of the airports in Asia, they are nowhere near the city. In Tokyo, it is about, what, an hour and a half away by bullet train. So, um, and exactly. And then, if, for example, in Hong Kong, it's, um, it's fast by this special train that costs, I think, about 25 bucks. But it's horribly long because you have to go on to, to total artificial island to go to the airport. So please take that account. And for another example is Taiwan. It's like one like one hour and like forty minutes away. It's really far, and we want to make sure just because um, getting from SFO to here is easy. Sometimes it's really far away abroad. Um, so do, do folks kind of get the whole travel getting there piece? So tips on are there any questions about? How, some travel logistics piece that folks have about anything? No? Okay, good. So we'll get to the meat of this now. So, the, the one big tip I'm going to offer you guys, okay? The one thing is who, who has a smartphone in here? Oh, good. Well, folks are willing to at least not, not hide that part. Um, but how many folks, uh, so uh, let's, let's do this a little bit further. So, how many folks have iPhones? Wow, okay. Yeah, well, I guess we're near Cupertino, so. Um, but if you have an iPhone, for example, uh, one of our big obs uh, obsessions is to not put it down, right? And to always stay connected. Maybe for the Android folks to kind of hippie, they don't really care about Snow, maybe. Okay. Um, but, but definitely one of the things I get asked a lot is, how do I stay connected when I'm going abroad? One of the cool things about being in Asia is that cell phones are everywhere. Everybody has a cell phone. In Japan, they have three cell phones, like one in each pocket and then one behind, and then you take two out when you're smoking a cigarette, and then the third when you're on the can. It's where there, you know, there's all, so many opportunities to get connected. But for us as travelers, how do we get access to that? One of the biggest about folks is if you are at the airport, immediately go to the information desk and ask them where is a kiosk or a seller for any prepaid SIMs that you can get. Actually, are there the international? Are there international folks in here? Non non U.S. folks. Okay, one, two, two. <laughs> did you guys actually get a prepaid SIM in the United States? No, no. You probably did the whole international calling thing, right? No. Oh, he just, he's, he's good. He's disconnected from the rest of the world right now. But if you want to stay connected, I think the important thing is to go check immediately at the airport to see if there's one. For example, in Hong Kong, it's on the actually upper level. You can get a SIM card for $15 that you can use for an entire month for unlimited data. A little bit, a little bit skimpy on the, the phone calls, but if you don't speak Cantonese, I think you guys don't care anyways. Um, they speak English. Um, but, but one of the... You know, conversely though, in Japan, for example, one of the one of the um, bad things about Japan is that they actually don't offer foreign travelers a lot of options to get cell phones. Um, so you're kind of screwed on that respect. But even for example, I actually was in Barcelona last week. In Barcelona, you just go to a regular cell phone store, and uh, in general, when you do that, you do need to have a, uh, your passport available to show them that um, you're not actually local, and they'll give you kind of a prepaid plan. Um, uh, plan and they run anywhere from fifteen to maybe sixty dollars, depending on the type of plan that you want. When I was at, when I was in Barcelona, it was twenty euros to get um, unlimited service for an entire month. So that's a great deal for folks. And you know, you can Instagram all you want. You can be on Facebook. Um, so it's really, I, I think, a great deal if you can find um, access to that. I would warn you, Japan is one of the hardest places to get it. If you have a local contact that can actually get you access to um, a phone, either if they have an extra phone that you can borrow, that's great. Um, but what happens if you don't have access to a phone? So one of the things is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is really important. How many folks have been using their Wi-Fi password here like crazy? It really sucks here because it's kind of sketchy, the connection, but Wi-Fi is really big in Japan, for example. So one of the workarounds is if you don't have a prepaid SIM, you can use a Wi-Fi uh, wi connection. And they actually have city, kind of city-wide Wi-Fi that you can use. And you can actually purchase um, those services um, uh, through, through one of the Japanese companies and basically you pay like, I think, 20 bucks. Or 20 bucks, and then if you're in certain neighborhoods, the, the Wi-Fi service will work. Um, the one thing, the trick that I do have for folks, and I don't know if this works on Android, but this definitely works on your iPhone. Um, if you ever have your iPhone in your hotel, for example, and you have your Wi-Fi connection because it's free, you know, you're enjoying it, and then um, if you load up your app, uh, map app, actually, 
you load it up, and then um, you search around the, the area that you're in. So maybe you're at an ca um, internet cafe or just a regular cafe, and you can access the internet. If you're loading that up, if you actually you know, zoom around, pinch around a little bit so that you get download the map for the entire area uh, in that neighborhood, if you leave that location actually, as long as you're, you're kind of uh, paying another type of uh, Wi-Fi signal in the neighborhood, it'll actually update your location. So it's a kind of cheap workaround for GPS if, if you're trying to find your way around a place. Um, so I definitely encourage for folks to try that out if you're in a place where you don't have access to a SIM card and you want to be able to find a place. Um, it's particularly important for folks, if anybody's ever been to, like, for example, Central or South America, those streets either don't have names or they don't make sense in the direction that you're going in, for example. So, so you really want to be able to, to navigate and not get lost. And I think um, having those uh, apps be able to work off the Wi-Fi is a great way to um, get around without feeling like, oh my god, I'm going to get killed or something. So, um, but I think other ways to talk about saving money, and I don't know if folks, how have folks been surviving the last, the two, last two days? Have you just been eating Burger King or down the street, or folks have been splurging on restaurants? Street fair. Street fair, perfect. Awesome food. Excellent. Um, so, so food, I think, is one of the considerations that, that folks have. And how many folks actually do not like sushi? You can be honest. No one will be offended here. Um, <laughs> so, so I mean, if you're going, if you're going to Japan. The, it's not the only thing that you don't have to just eat sushi. There's, <laughs> there's a lot more to Japanese cuisine than sushi. Uh, is we don't know it's um, So, but there's um, there's a lot of different options. Um, I don't know if anybody's actually ever seen. There was an episode of um, Anthony Bourdain where he went to Japan, and he talked about uh, he met somebody who actually talked about going to Lawson's, which is a convenience store, and eating out of a convenience store. And I actually tried this myself after seeing it, and it actually does work if you want to eat, um, for example, rice balls for like a dollar or something, uh, that's a nice filling meal for a dollar or something. Um, or you want to eat a sandwich that will not give you salmonella. Um, uh, I think the difference is that in Asia, a lot of the convenience store, it actually, the food is actually eaten by the customers. It's not just sitting there for the next seven years uh, with 17 toxic uh, preservatives in it. Um, so, so a lot of the food, I think you can expect a much better quality of the food, and maybe it's a little bit more simple, but uh, definitely is a good way to save money. Yeah, you can't go eat $40 or $60, actually, shabu shabu somewhere. But um, you can, you know, maybe for your quiet nights, just, oh, I'll just have a, like, a 40 ounce and a rice ball, you know? Save up. And, and it's all about building out your wallet so that you have money to do other things. So I definitely encourage folks, if you're traveling abroad, don't think just because it says 7-Eleven that it's actually not doable. Um, and then um, the other tip I have for folks to literally save money, as in, like, that dollar bill, is to not use foreign exchange services, so currency exchange services, that is the biggest ripoff in the world. Uh, and we rip off the people who come to our country, but we don't want to be ripped off when we go to other people's country. <laughs> so, but, but in general, for folks who actually tra have travel around, I don't know if folks know this, but if you use an ATM machine, actually, it actually gives you a better exchange rate because they update less frequently than the, the foreign currency exchange services. Um, and also, when you go to a, a, a service, they'll charge you a flat fee up front. And it's usually about 10 US dollars just to use their service. Not to mention the, you know, the bad exchange rate that they're gonna give you, and then also the charge for the percent of the amount that you wanna exchange. So after that, you, you, may, you may give them a 20 US dollar bill, they'll give you back like, oh, like 10 yen. Um, <laughs> that's not a lot, actually, so uh, no, I'm exaggerating on that part. But definitely, I would encourage folks to, to use an ATM if possible, but in order to do that, you have to make sure that you contact your bank so that you can do that, otherwise you'll end up with this horrible signal saying, oh, sorry, you don't have permission to do that. But if you do that, you will save, on average, about 20 to $30 over your trip, um, and you also can access, um, you can go more frequently to exchange money so that you're not carrying um, a giant wad of bills unless you were going to like a uh, boys club or something. But, um, but and to definitely in terms of the being scared or being ripped off, definitely it will save you on that part of not being a target for pickpockets or, or, or other type of bad people. Um, 
And then the thing I also want to say, we're all great about flashing bills, and that guy who drinks a lot of alcohol probably does that. Um, but definitely um, being able to know when to use your credit card and when not to use your credit card is really important. Um, if you're going to buy a Domo doll off of the guy in the corner, should you be giving him your credit card? No, probably not. Um, but being able to go to maybe a reputable restaurant and you know that they deal with a lot of um, travelers, yeah, use your credit card. Um, but the, the new thing that's coming out now is that most credit cards will not uh, charge you a foreign, uh, foreign transaction fee nowadays. So if you have one that does charge you that, either call them up and ask them to take that uh, fee off or to change it so that you don't get those fees, or you get a credit card that will not charge you those fees for your trip. Um, those fees can be pretty high if you're spending a lot of money or using your card very frequently. So it's really important that you get a card that does not charge you those fees. Um, it actually is a regulatory change in the United States now where they can't charge you those fees. But I think the credit card companies are very slow to implement that. So check with your credit card company. I know for folks who have Chase, for example, they do not charge those fees anymore. So you can definitely use that as your card to, to go abroad. Um, in terms of credit cards, I also want to mention if how many folks actually use kind of rewards credit cards? How many folks have an airline mile rewards credit card? So the people you see who raise their hand, those are the smart ones. So when you have a rewards credit card, what's good about them is that it's not just for the dollar that you spend, but there are certain situations where you can generate a lot of um, points for those, for miles. So for example, I actually went on a cruise last week. So to go on that cruise, it cost me about $1,000, but I got about 20 something thousand um, miles just to go on that cruise. Uh, it's through a promotion, but there's a ways for you to really get up to that amount for your first class for your ticket, right? So if you want to get up to that amount, you really know you need to what type of credit card that you have, the fees that you're being charged, but also what are some of the benefits of those credit cards. So if your credit card has no benefits, you should switch. How many folks, but folks have some type of benefits, like cash back, right? Some people are looking at me like blank stares, like they don't know what their credit card benefits are. So please look at the fine print, but I would definitely encourage folks to really take advantage of your savings. Um, yes, there are some annual membership fees for those credit cards, but um, a lot of times they also let you roll over those miles. So when you don't travel enough, so you, if you travel every two years and your miles expire, it's good to have those credit cards so that each time you just pay a dollar for a stick of gum, you can actually then stretch out your miles for much further. So. So I do want to kind of have a more interactive discussion now about kind of why don't we go on vacation? Um, and I know money is one of them, but are, are there kind of some concerns or things that folks feel about traveling abroad or traveling in general that makes you guys want to travel less? Anybody? The, sure. safe, the safety of the country. Like the Mexico safe. Mexico is like all bad. Yeah, so you, you don't want to end up in 13 pieces in a garbage bag in Tijuana. <laughs> Sure, that's a good one. Anything else? Did you say go to the wrong place? I said he's going to the wrong place. Oh, he's going to the wrong place. If your sexual fetish used to be cut up in 13 pieces, maybe. Um, anything else about concerns that folks have about why you don't travel, or reasons why you don't travel as much as you'd like? Everybody's cool about traveling? Okay. Yes. I think it's because you're just used to being at work all the time. Yourself to go out, so. Great, yeah. uh, excellent. And he's not a plant. Um, that's a great, great one. So, <laughs> <laughs> the blue shirts are not collaborating here. Um, <laughs> but definitely, I think the concern around um, being able to step away from work. And we all, we all, is it live to work or work to live? I don't remember which one it was. But um, the important piece to remember is in any type of job that you have, um, if you're that important and they can't fire you, they're not going to fire you. So if you request to take time off and going on vacation and you're still getting a lot of hassle, it's a choice that your employer or your boss has to make. Either they fire you or they replace you or they do whatever they need to do. But if you need to go on vacation for your own mental kind of health sake, you got to go on vacation. And I think um, one of the strategies for folks to kind of work around that is if you give your boss as much notice as possible. It's really hard if you say, I'm going on a trip next year. People are like, oh, well, maybe I'm going to fire you in 11 months. That's good. Um, but, but you want to give as much notice to, so that you really have no, they can't really argue that, oh, well, it's too busy. Well, you already knew this a 
a year ago that I was going to do this. And maybe for some of you guys, that's how long it'll take you to save up and, you know, all that stuff. But giving that notice, I think, is a good way to, to really um, work around the work issue. Is there any other kind of concerns that folks have? Yes? Not just about taking the time off, but coordinating time off with people you travel with. Mm. So the sketchy people, the shady ones who don't want to commit, right? <laughs> Hopefully not, not a boyfriend. That, that person has to go regardless. And, um, but in general, if, if it's about getting buy-in from folks, um, maybe it's your parents. Um, you, you don't mind traveling with your uh, family, or maybe it's just a group of friends that you're close with. Part of, part of working around that is uh, making sure that they understand how important it is to you, how important it is for you to go, go somewhere, but also to, to emphasize on a more basic level of, the longer you wait, the more expensive it is. And uh, I think a, par a partner strategy that I've kind of had is to, to always say, well, you're going to pay the difference, right? The more expensive it gets, you're going to pay the difference. I actually works on my parents a lot, so that's, that's always a good tip to throw out. So, um, so I encourage folks to try that as well, getting buy-in. And anybody else have a concern? Yes? Planning the vacation. Planning itself. So. This is I, actually, I always forget things. Yes. And that's like my fear of planning is the logistic part. That's actually me. For example, I did not book my hotel for tonight and tomorrow night. So um, <laughs> I fixed that last night. So if folks want to see me, I will be in this hotel. Um, but actually, th that's actually a good one connected to our previous concern around having friends who are not non-committal. The best way is to have a friend actually harass you. So um, particularly if you say, oh, I'm so stressed, my hair is falling out, or I'm gaining 17 pounds every day. If you nag to your friend that you're feeling stressed out, they'll be like, you go on vacation. I don't want to hear you anymore. Go on vacation. So, so they'll nag you, and they'll, they'll make sure that you are sticking on board. I think that's been the best way for, for myself to commit to something is to get friends to really um, um, encourage you, but also keep you honest about your plans and making sure that you're running on time. Um, so, so for folks who have that kind of good friend you can rely on to do that, that's great. If you don't, find one. And this actually is a good room to do that because you guys are all interested in traveling. So I would say look around, see if there's somebody you don't mind sitting in first class next to. Hopefully they're the ones getting you the first class ticket. <laughs> Not necessarily in this room because you guys are all poor. But, um, <laughs> so, I, I do want to kind of end with um, the resources, just so we talked about these resources. I have one special one that I do want to talk about is, um, how many folks have actually been to dannychu.com? dannychu.com, nobody, wow, this is a great one for you guys. Um, so dannychu.com is actually, it's a great website, it's run by a guy named Danny Chu, um, <laughs> who actually lives in, in Tokyo, and uh, he actually does uh, write-ups of every single part of the metro Tokyo area. Um, so every single neighborhood, he has pictures, maps, translations, links to every single part. So if you want to go to Harajuku, you want to go to, um, um, you want to go to Hakone, where the, all the bathhouses, no, the onsens, the onsens are. Um, there are maps and articles about all those places. It's really meant for a Western audience, actually. So it's a great way to um, do research and compile places. The cool thing about Danish is that dot um, com is that they actually started doing more of just general Asia. So there's a whole section about um, Taiwan, Singapore, and Hong Kong. So I would encourage folks to check out that website to try and find out more information about um, do the research that you need. Um, download those pages onto your computer or to your phone so that you have them available for offline reading. Um, it's a really great website. Um, the other last resource I have is um, how many folks have a Facebook profile? <laughs> Some people are like, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but, uh, um, so, because you're posting bad pictures on your profile. Um, but um, for Facebook, the best, uh, my recommendations for the one of the best uh, pages that you can actually go to is um, there's this new thing. Uh, this is actually an old one. It's called Visit Japan. There's a new one called Visit the New Japan uh, Facebook page. And they actually do a lot of contests, but they also do really great contemporary articles about what's happening now that you can do in Japan. So if you're, you already know you're going to Tokyo, they give you articles about what you can do. Um, there's also um, this, it's like a, kind of like a zine, um, online magazine um, called uh, La Tension. Um, and they also have a really great Facebook page. And um, they actually do uh, kind of the outside the norm stuff. So things about like, for example, like fetish club. 
Thailand, for example, or about um, a weird place to eat, like ramen off somebody's lap or something. So, um, so they're a great website. And then the last website I would definitely encourage folks to check out is actually the um, the ANA website. With ANA is an airline. I actually think they buy a lot of of SFO. Um, they actually not just do they have the airline stuff. Uh, the, about the flights and stuff, but they also have a lot of things about activities and projects that, um, or um, uh, events that are going on in Japan. So I definitely encourage folks to uh, like those websites or those Facebook pages and really utilize them. So I have maybe one minute for any lasting questions. Are there any questions that folks might have? I will be here until Tuesday, so if you're in the Bay Area, you want to say hi to me? I can uh, answer any questions, but um, for folks who want to use the website, it's gvacation.tumblr.com. You can access it right away when you leave this room and you're using a Wi-Fi signal. You can um, post a comment, ask a question on there, I'll get it. Um, but folks can also feel free to come talk to me um, throughout the rest of the day and uh, try to answer any questions that you might have on the specific um, traveler things. Um, and where, so just as a last thing, since someone has any question, where is your next destination? Where is your next vacation? Hawaii. Hawaii, great! Palm Springs. Palm Springs, that's not too far. <laughs> <laughs> Something, any, anybody else? Caribbean. Caribbean, great. Italy. Beaches. Any, anything else? Venice. Venice? Yeah. California? Yeah. Gu Gu uh, <laughs> Guam. 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 Guam's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, hot guys now. Um, so, okay, great. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and please utilize the website as a, a resource.